Job type is a field where you're specifying what type of job it is that you guys are covering. Okay, so depo, video job, a video deposition, a trial, presentations, hearings, whatever it is that you guys will do. In my example, I'll choose a depo. Keep in mind, again, you can add other job types in the code manager. Uh, your business unit, you can choose your default, again, in user preferences, um, but you can also choose pull the drop down, and you can select any business unit that this job should pertain to. If you only have one business unit in your RB setup, then, of course, it'll default to your one. You never have to really worry about that. So witness name was self-explanatory. This is the witness that will be deposed. So we'll just say uh, Eric Davidson here. If you have multiple witnesses, again, I would separate it with it by a comma and type in more names. If they're an expert, select an expert type. If not, don't worry about it. And then you'll come down to your actual case selection for this particular job. So in the case selection for this particular job, we want you to do one of two things. Either A, tie this job to an existing case in your system, or B, create the case and tie this job to that new case. So again, notice this build is grayed out, but what you're going to do is you're going to click your lookup case button. Your lookup window will appear, and you're going to type in any part of your case name. So I can say OMTI, click enter, and all my cases that have part of OMTI in it will appear. And again, you have your new button if you want to create something on the fly. But in this one, I'll say OMTI versus uh, David. The general tab, as you can see, is basic job information. And this is a setting, as you can see, for a single job date. Now, before we go on and move to the location tab, what I want to show you is, is you can also create multiple dates from a single job window. So you have the ability to create one single job, but have it replicate as multiple jobs from the single job window. Now, notice at the top up here, we have a button that says set multiple dates. If I click this, watch what happens down here. Your job date becomes a lookup. So let's click the lookup job date button to the right. And what we're going to do here is the system will give you two options to actually set multiple dates. We'll give you a scheduler method, and we're also going to give you a fixed dates method. The scheduler method would be like me calling you guys and saying, hey, I have a new case that's coming up. We're going to meet every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday for the whole month of December. So I could say December 1st here to the end of December. And I could pick a start time and end time, let's just say 9 to noon. So if I eventually save this particular job, what the system will do is it'll copy all the job information for every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday between that date range. So it'll create all those jobs for you. The only thing you'll have to do is open up those individual jobs and maybe change the time and the witness. Now, a fixed dates method is kind of like the same thing, except it's not following a specific schedule. It can just be random dates. So again, I can call you with a new case coming up. And I can say, click in here, click my drop down, and say we're going to meet on November 19th. And click the second field, click the drop down. Then we're going to meet on November 30th, and so on. Continue to pick random dates. Pick your time, it's going to do the same thing. So RB will create all those jobs on the individual dates. Okay, very good. So I'm going to go, I just want to do one single date, so I'm going to click set single date again. And it will retain all the original information that we set. Let's go over to the location tab. The location tab is for you guys to specify the physical location of the actual job where it's taking place. Now you can do this in one of four ways in RB8. The first and most obvious way is right here by this checkbox, same location as ordering client. So if the job is taking place at the ordering attorney's office, then you simply check this box. We'll bring in all the firm's information. If not, leave it unchecked. And basically you'll have a look from firm, a lookup from location, and a manual entry option. So we'll give you three other options here. Look up from firm would basically be you guys saying, okay, this job is going to take place at another firm's office and that firm is in my system. So I'm simply going to search and select that firm. So I could say look up from firm here, click my search firm button to the right, and just type in any part of that firm name. So I could say Berg, Steiner, Chapman, and select them. There you go. Your second option in here under the drop down is location. So we do give you a part of the system called locations it's to create physical job locations that you go to. So not necessarily, of course, a law firm's office, but it could be a hotel, a meeting centers, conference rooms, doctor's offices, whatever. The whole idea of it is to create these and store them in the system. That way you don't have to type them in manually all the time. So if you know you're going to use it more than once, go ahead and create it and store it in RB8. So I can say look up from location. Click my search location button to the right, and I can say Hilton Hotel, and select it. There you go. Nice and easy. Your last option under the drop-down for lookup from is manual, 
And basically all this does is it opens up all the fields and allows you to type in a manual location. Now keep in mind this does not save it as a location. It does just enter it as a manual. For this one I will just do same location as ordering client. Let's go over to the additional info tab. First field you see is notation. And what I want to do here first is I want to minimize my window because I want to show you something on the outside of the job. When you're actually looking at your calendar manager, when you're looking at the result, uh, one of the columns you'll actually see here, if I scroll to the right, is notation. So this notation field here, what it is, this is a free text field. You can type in here whatever you want. Now what a lot of people will actually do is they'll actually type in something in here that's important information about the job so their staff can actually see it on the outside of the job so they don't have to open it up and view that important information. So with some people, what I've seen them do in the past is they'll put like an RT here for real time, noting that it's a real time job. So again, they can see it on the outside job, outside of the job. The due date of the job will pre-populate itself once you save the actual job. Once I click save, this will populate. Right now, the system doesn't know when to calculate the due date because we haven't actually set it. Um, if you want to set your own manual due date, you can just by clicking the uh, drop down arrow and selecting your date. But I'm going to leave mine unchecked so it will. All right, coming down below, confirmation notes. These notes are important. Whatever you type in here, they show up on the confirmation letter to the client. Okay, so be careful what you type in there. They will see those. These notes down below, resource notification notes, these are for the assigned resource. So if you have important notes to type in about the job to uh, tell your resource, then you can type those notes in here. They will show up on the worksheet. We do have the spell check buttons here for both notes fields. So if you're unsure you're spelling, we can check it for you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this job. And once I click save, you'll see the job number appear, you'll see the status appear, and this due date will appear. So let's click save. And there we go. We have our job date number. We have our status. And now we have a due date. 